It's kind of hard to review Ruby Gilman because it turns out it's very much a kid's movie. And honestly, I found that to be the most disappointing part. My best performing video to date is this guy right here, all about DreamWorks villains and how amazing they are because they aren't just some big bad for the hero to beat up. They are a negative example that cements the theme and the lesson of the movie. Ever since their inception with ants and especially the absolute classic Prince of Egypt, DreamWorks has been delivering a very high ratio of quality, family movies. And I say family movies because they're very deep and they have something for everyone in the family to enjoy. They have layers. Like onions. Then they made Trolls, which is more along the lines of what Illumination specializes in. You know, brightly colored, silly kids movies. Nothing inherently wrong with that at all, but I've always felt that DreamWorks had a bit of a higher standard. So that brings us back to Ruby Gilman, which is decidedly a kiddie movie, very much in the vein of Trolls. And again, nothing inherently wrong with that. Just don't go in expecting better, even if DreamWorks has led you to expect better. You have let me down. So with that said, I can't be too hard on it or give it like a critical film review because come on, it's a kid flick. But if your kids are 10-ish or under, they're probably gonna have a good time. Let me give you a brief synopsis, then I'll give you the family scores. The plot is pretty much what you saw in the trailers. Ruby is trying to be a normal human teenager, except she's got blue skin and four really long tentacle-like fingers and fins where her ears should be. Her parents tell everyone that they are Canadian and the town just seems to roll with that. Her mom sells real estate her dad appears to have a restaurant and also makes youtube videos on the side which if you ask me is pretty friggin lame i don't know why they didn't just go with the luca route and make them look human when they're dry but whatevs prom is coming up and ruby wants to go with heartthrob connor who she's tutoring in math through a wacky series of accidents connor falls into the ocean and ruby dives in after him even though her mom has told her never ever go in the ocean and we find out why because she turns into a giant kraken when she does some kind of pulse goes out her extended family comes looking for her revealing that she she is royalty. Her mom ran away when she was a baby because grandmama was overbearing and meddling. Also, Connor is saved by Ruby, but the credit goes to Eric. Sorry, Chelsea, who everybody instantly falls in love with while Ruby tries to sneak away into the crowd to hide her Kraken-ness. Chelsea knows she's a Kraken and befriends her, convincing her to find the lost trident of Oceana, which was hidden away after the last great battle between Krakens and mermaids. She tells Ruby that they can demonstrate that peace could be achieved if they find the trident. Oh no, it's actually a ruse, and she reveals that she is not a teenager. She is actually the mermaid from that battle. Kaiju battle ensues. Ruby, Mom, and Grandma all forget each other for problems that were never really built up that much they team attack the mermaid ruby gets to go to prom happily ever after it's brightly colored and made for kids so it's okay that the plot is really silly and basic and well made for kids there's no deep message beyond be yourself and there's no big emotional moments this is cotton candy quick insert for the insert because some of you parents are going to want to know one of ruby's friends is real gay saying that a girl asked her to prom. When she does show up to prom later on in the movie, she's wearing a suit jacket and a rainbow bow tie. We get a very quick glimpse for just a few frames of the extremely androgynous partner right at the end. You know, you always wonder what they're gonna put in. This is the thing. As far as animation, everything is very rubbery and rounded. It's made for kids. It's very brightly colored. It had a very cloudy with a chance of meatballs feeling. Everybody's got extra long limbs. They're real wobbly. They do explain that Ruby doesn't have a spine, but everybody's limbs do that super rubbery rubbery move thing, which I actually like. I just, I just really like Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs. All right, let's get those kids scores up on the screen. And you can see right here, the teenagers were already too old for this. This is like a single digit kid movie. My 13 and 15 year olds were both pretty bored. It was a good thing they had popcorn there. They, they gave it the standard compliments. You know, it was cute. It was fun. They both agreed the pacing was terrible. The movie just kind of feels tossed together. It's just a series of events that are happening at a very quick pace, but none of them really feel connected. But again, this is a kid's movie. I just want to keep saying that again. I don't want you to think I'm crapping on this movie. It's just, you have to treat it with those lower standards, you know? 11, 9, seven-year-old boys, they all really liked it. They thought it was fun and brightly colored. Uh, they did agree that it was very strange that the family of blue people with fins for ears didn't, you know, nobody really cared that they look extremely different. The 11-year-old was also a little disappointed that the trailers basically gave the entire movie away. Overall, that age group, they liked it a lot. Very entertaining for them. Three-year-old did not like it, and I confirmed this multiple times. 
times because I really thought she was going to. And I asked her, what didn't you like about it? And she said she didn't like the mermaid, but pointed out she did like her older sister, the 15-year-old that was there in the theater with us. So that made the movie better. Um, she was distracted in the middle, but that was because she was trying to wrestle her bra off. And I need you to understand by bra, I mean the sleep mask that she wears around her chest most days. Wife gave it a six out of 10, again, saying it's nice and cute by kid movie standards. Basically, they were doing Turning Red, but better. At one point after Ruby does the whole, she figures out she's a Kraken, and there's a scene and her father is telling her, your body is changing, you're like a flower. So it's, you know, they're doing the coming of age thing, but without the blood moon and the red panda, which was a little on the nose. I didn't enjoy it, but you know, this is not a family movie. It's a very kid movie. I do recommend that you wait to rent this one. This is not a rush out and see it in the theater situation. My 13 year old specified, this is not only a rental, but this is the kind of thing you put on in the background while you're doing something else. This probably won't make your regular rotation of movies, but it might be nice, you know, to pass a weeknight or something like that. It's very okay. I do kind of regret spending money to go see this in the theater with all the kids. I mean, always going to the theater is a fun experience, but I, if we bought tickets, I would have rather we just went and saw Spider-Verse again. But tell me what you think. Are you going to go see this one? Are you going to wait? Are you surprised that it is so childlike given DreamWorks track record? Give me your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to reading them. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.